everybody. Welcome to Fab Fit Friday. I almost canceled today because I'm teaching at 3 o'clock for Stitches Expo September, but I wanted to come on quick and just show you my progress on my bodice. Um, honestly, I didn't have time to sew up my latest changes. Hi, Diane. Welcome. I'm going to be doing a quick a quick FabFit Friday today because I'm teaching my raglan sleeve top class for stitches at home at three and I have to prep for that so I just want to get on and just show you some things about my pattern um, and my bodice draft if you remember last week I had it on and you know maybe I can just put it on again here let me just actually let me just put it on so you can see some things I'm talking about here. I made some adjustments to it, which really helped, so I can show you. Oh, Janie likes my top. That was my crossover cardi that I have in, um, I made in Rayon Jersey. And what am I saying, not Rayon Jersey? Uh, uh, Shally, Rayon Shally. All right, so I wanna show you something here. And probably I should have just had it on um, from the get-go. But basically, let me just top and say um, hello to everybody. Oh, I'm so happy everybody is joining in today. This is why I didn't want to cancel, because I really miss you guys if I'm not on on Friday. So I really appreciate you guys um, hanging out with me. Um, let me see. Assalam. Elias says assalam. Assalam. I'm, I'm assuming that means hello. Thank you for joining. Diane says hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Christine. And Christine, hello. Dimple73 wants to know if I provide classes in person. I do provide classes in person when people hire me to do um, events at their, for their group or, um, at you know bigger sewing um, events, I did propose classes for for Puyallup in you know on the West Coast in March next year. I am teaching jean fitting for the Jacksonville, Florida ASG the third weekend in um, October. If anybody's interested in that, I'm going to be flying out my newsletter. Make sure you. Um, check out my newsletter because I'll have my whole fall class in there. So there are a couple things I'm doing in person um, and a few things I'm doing in Zoom land. So that's my little report on that. Hi, Rena. Hi, Mary. Um, did I say hi to everyone? Hi, Amelia. Oh, Amelia says, I just want to apologize for not getting any photos to you. My week has been a bit been a comedy of errors. I've had a few uh, comedies of errors as well. <laughs> so um, I understand that. So I just want to show you this sleeve here. I'm much happier with the way this sleeve is fitting me. I think you can see it's it's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did right in the muslin to um, fix it and I'm going to show you on my pattern as well. And then I'm going to show you how to um, rotate a dart um, oh lean says um, I made my third muslin um, hope to learn about this evening seems my bodice is too small um, yes my bodice was too tight as well I think you can see if I turn around I let out my center back seam a quarter inch let me turn around can you see that and that really made a big difference. Just that little quarter inch loosened up my back. Um, so when you're looking at the sleeve, no, this is the sleeve, I'm sorry, this is the sleeve I fixed. So actually, let me show you the right, let me show you standing up here. Okay, so if I'm looking in the mirror, this is the sleeve I fixed. And you can see I'm pretty happy with the way it hangs now. Okay, so it's straight. Um, 
there are some other things I'm going to be doing to it. This is the one that's a little bit screwed up. It's got more wrinkles and it's snugger and it's got some issues in the cap. So I've got mishmash sleeves on. So this, this muslin has been tortured to death. Hi, Christine. Welcome. So what I want to show you here is I'm going to show you on my phone, actually, because I took pictures of my um, process so I could share with you what I did. So the first thing is I'm going to zoom right in so you can see. Let me lighten this up here. Oops. So the first thing I w was thinking about with my armhole is my back armhole was very straight in that it barely had a scoop. So I scooped the back armhole and I think that's kind of funny that I'm talking about scooping with a shirt bodice draft because um, I've been also working on my top down center out pants fitting so I feel like scooping and talking about fat adjustments is really all I've been doing all week. But basically, you can see here, that's my back armhole, and I drew the scoop in, then I trimmed it off, and then I sewed it back on. And then in the front, oh, so you can see here, see, I trimmed that little bit off right there. Okay, and then I took it apart, so you can see here, I think you can see that I took the sleeve cap out, I readjusted the ease, and I sewed it back in. Then in the front, when I was looking at the way my muslin was fitting, I felt like the seam was too far onto my arm or away from my body. So I scooped out my front armhole that little bit from the shoulder down to the notch, basically. So you can see here that that color is where I scooped, and I can show you that on my actual pattern. And over here, that's the actual piece of fabric that I trimmed off my armhole and I used it as a template to shape the curve of my back armhole. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you on my phone. Now let me show you, oops, let me get this so it's a little bit darker here so we can see what we're doing. All right, so you can see in the back, I scooped a little bit, okay, and I also added about a quarter to three eighths of an inch to my back shoulder slope. Um, Lean is asking me how much ease do you need in the cap of the sleeves. Um, I have approximately between a half and three quarters of an inch in the cap that I have now. And remember last week I showed you two different ways to add ease to the cap. I'm going to show you my adjusted sleeve after, and we'll talk about that again. Um, but basically, that's my new back armhole. And then in the front, um, I trimmed off, and I made, there's my new front armhole. And then you'll notice another thing I did in the front is, when I was looking at the fit of my bust across here, I felt it was a little bit too snug. I wanted to add a little bit more room, so I did a tiny like half inch full bust adjustment to give myself a little bit more cup size. Um, and actually, I think that's gonna make it fit better here. I feel like down here, these waist starts, um, or the waist start, I'm gonna be playing with the total volume of my darts after I see what this does. But I did add just a half an inch, so I had a little bit more cup room in my bust because I felt like it's snug. And then again, I added a quarter of an inch to my center back seam because when I did this, it just felt really tight. And the cool thing is, I just let out the center back seam of my muslin to test it, that quarter inch, and it immediately felt better. Also, you know, scooping this out and then also scooping out the front and re sewing it in really. Um, it instantly felt better. So one thing you need to think about, and I was um, talking with a new friend that I made on YouTube, Sarah Me from So So Lies. I'm gonna put a link to her channel um, below this video when I get off. 
And actually, she sent me her sleeve fitting um, guide, and I'm going to put a link to that either today or next week when we talk about it some more because she has some really good information about um, sleeve fitting and she does some things differently than I do which I think is very very cool and I want to um, share those things and I want you to be able to have access to them if you want to so I will be putting links to those things when I get off camera or it might be after my raglan sleeve class because I'm doing that at three we'll see that's why I'm going to keep today kind of short. But basically, um, rotating, the reason why I rotated half of my waist dart to my bust was so I, that I could do the bust adjustment. So those are the things I did, um, and then I ran out of time, and I didn't have time to sew together this new muslin. So next week, I will be fine-tuning these adjustments based on how that muslin fits, and I'll also be sort of finishing up the fitting. So really, Amelia and anybody else who, you know, was planning on sending me photos of their fitting issues, please, you know, email me those during the week, you know, so I have time to look at them before Friday or over the weekend, and I'll include any fitting information that you guys need um, based on how your muslins are fitting um, next week. So that's what I did. And I just want to show you, um, I'm going to show you one. Oh, that's my actual, oh, this is my, all right. So this is my pattern without, this is my pattern with a seam allowance. Um, and then I ran out of time. Let me get, let me get, I think I have here. Hold on. I'm going to get a thing. I'm going to show you how to rotate the dart. All right, I'm just going <coughs> to, excuse me. I'm just going to recycle this draft, and I'm going to use it to show you how to rotate a dart. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off here, because I don't want to keep using paper. Like, this is an old version that didn't work out, so I can use it to show you how to rotate a dart. So here is my center front, okay? and. Basically, when you have a big waist dart like this, um, it's the easiest way to draft, um, it's the easiest way to draft your bodice from the start, because you're just dealing with one dart, but most styles don't have just a waist dart, and as a matter of fact, it's more common to see it as a bust dart. So I just want to show you here how I would rotate a dart, and then I'm going to show you the ease in my sleeve cap. So you guys know about that. Those are the two things I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to measure from the middle of my shoulder down um, so here and actually on me this is actually where my apex is 12 and a half inches from the middle of my shoulder. Um, so typically though if your dart is right at your um, if it's right at your apex you want to lower it so I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower that an inch so I'm just gonna redraw like this okay so there's the new position of my dart this is where my apex is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw, I'll use a different color, so I'm just going to draw a line connecting that, and then I'm going to draw a line out to the side seam, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut out this dart, okay? And then I'm going to slash this 
and slash this little line. So what that's going to allow me to do, actually I wanted to create a pivot right here. What that's going to allow me to do is close the waist start a little bit and open a bust start. And I'm not going to worry about the exact amount I'm doing that. I'm just going to tape this in place here. All right, so you can see what I have now is I have a smaller waist start and I have a bust start. Oh, good morning from sunny California. Gary, how are you? Happy Friday. Finally cooling a little bit down to 94. <laughs> so happy you're with us. I'm just going to do some quick pattern adjusting here for some things that I did to my pattern. Um, and then I'm going to do the final fitting next week because I ran out of time this week. Um, all right, so that fills in the start, and I'll just redraw it so you can see it here. Okay. All right, so there's the waist start. The bust start over here, okay, now it's in a position, um, and it's located at my apex. So I've got that, and I'm just going to use, oh no, I'm crushing my sleeve. I traumatized my sleeve with my chair. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, I just need a piece of paper to help fill in that start. So now I'm just going to fill in the start here. Like this. And then I'm going to back it up a little bit, okay, because we don't want the tip of the dart to be at the very apex. So again, I'm going to back that up. Now, generally, the rule for positioning your dart is the bigger your cup size, the farther away it can be from the apex. So I am going to back it up an inch and a half, and then I'm going to redraw that. Okay. All right. Okay, so now I've got a bust start, and I think I've shown this a few times if you want to know how to get the side seam edge at a dart, if you fold it as if you were going to sew it, and I fold dart intake up for D cups and higher, and I fold it down for A, B, or C cups, supposedly it, it's minimizing if the fullness is folded up on a larger cup size. I don't know if that's actually critical. I've done it both ways, and honestly, you know, whatever you think is comfortable for you, I think it's fine. So notice I have folded the dart into place here. So if I cut off the extra, you end up with the shape of the dart. So you can see here we have um, the shape of the dart. I can do that down here as well. So basically, if I fold the dart like this, and I close it like that, then if I cut along, I will get a nice smooth transition. And you can see now I have um, Uh-oh, Mary has to go help hubby move lumber around. She's going to catch the replay. All right, well, Mary, honestly, you've caught most of it because I'm going to just finish up with a few quick things, and then I'm going to sign off for today because I have to get ready to teach at 3. So, um, But thank you, for, thank you for checking in. All right, so here is my rotated dart. So if anybody wants to rotate their dart so you have a bust dart, 
and a waist start. Sometimes that's easier to then negotiate when you're, you're doing your fitting down here instead of just dealing with a big dart at the waist. So that's that issue I wanted to share with you. The next thing is, let's look at Here are my finished pat. Oops. Here are my finished patterns with um, with uh, seam allowances. What I'm going to do here is I am going to show you. I'm going to walk my sleeve and I'm going to show you how much ease I have. And when I originally walked it, I did not have enough ease based on the adjustments I did. So you can see this is the sleeve where I slashed it up the middle and spread it an inch to, to increase the width of my cap here. And I decided when I realized I had negative half inch of ease after making the adjustments to the, to the pattern I just showed you. So what I decided to do, I know I do not need any more height to my cap. My cap is already six inches high. That's what I need. So from the tip of my shoulder down six inches is where my bicep is. So I did not want to slash the cap and spread it because that is a way to add ease. I showed that last week. So I decided I would spread the cap a little bit more because again, my sleeve was feeling snug through the cap in addition to all the other things I was feeling. So what I did was I cut straight up the center and I pivoted here, so I did not add any here, and I spread it another inch. So this new adjustment looks like this. And this is just kind of a cheater way, I think, to you know, add ease without playing with reshaping the cap itself. And you can see it adds the maximum amount of ease where I needed it. Okay, so I needed, you know, at least a half an inch in addition to the overlap that I had, I had negative ease. So I spread it like an inch and seven eighths. Oh, uh, an inch and a, yeah, an inch and seven eighths to give myself a little bit more than a half an inch of ease. So now I want to show you, um, I'm just going to walk it really quickly. So into my front first, I'm lining up there, I'm going to walk it along the stitching line, not the um, edge, because the stitching line is where it sews together. So I am going to just rotate my sleeve around until I get up to the top. So when I get to the top, I have to mark, I have to mark it where the actual seam is. So my front is right here, and I'll put an F for front. So if I show you, that's where my front stopped, right there. Okay, now I'm going to walk my back. Okay, so I'm going to just use my stiletto. I'll just drag it over here. Okay. So when I get to the top here, I'm going to mark it right where the seam is, which is right here. So my back is right here. This is my back. That's my front. So if we look at it, I'm going to zoom in so you can see now. Okay, so basically, this is where my back 
my back stopped right there, my front stopped right here, okay? So this space between here and here, that's the amount of ease I have. And generally, I like to have, you know, on a woven non-stretch shirt, I think a half inch, three quarters of an inch, an inch, depending on the size you're working with, is a good amount of ease. I don't like to have a ton of ease in my calf. I do know some people who will put, you know, two or four inches of ease in their calf, and I just think that's a lot. So, you know, if you're a size small, medium, large, you know, 10, 12, half inch, five eighths, when you get to size 14, 16, 18, you know, three quarters to an inch, if you're in above size 20, you can go over an inch of ease, but you know, you do want to have some ease. So, um, I'm happy with this amount of ease. I can't wait to test this actually. Okay. So what you do to find your shoulder notch is you actually measure between the two, um, where the two sleeves ended and you find the middle, which is right here. So my actual notch would be right here. And you can see it's slightly forward of the center of my sleeve. So this is the shoulder notch right here. Okay, so that's how you walk your sleeve to see how much ease you have. And really, if you need to add ease to your pattern, this was a really easy way to do it um, by slashing it and spreading it. Now, do it this way if you have enough height in your calf. If your cap is too short um, and it's straining from the tip of your shoulder down, you know, to your bicep, you can slash the pattern this way and spread it to add ease. And I think I have that example somewhere. Oh yes, in here. Okay, so this is how you can add ease if you need to lengthen your cap as well. But if you're feeling snug in your sleeve and you're wondering what to do, the first thing to check is how, what your measurement is from front around to the back across the outside of your arm, halfway between the tip of the shoulder and the, and the you know, in the base of your armhole. So somewhere in here where it connects, your, your arm is connected to your shoulder, measure around the outside of your sleeve and then check to see what that is, you know, halfway between the notch and the top of the cap. So somewhere in here, you know, just measure it and see. You want to have at least an inch more width to your cap than the measurement of your body there. So that's a thing that you can do to, you know, check your cap and decide if you need to add ease after walking it on your draft. If you need more height, you can slash and spread here. If you need more width to your cap, you can spread it this way. All right, so those are the two um, things that you can do to add ease to your cap. And like I said, I'm going to um, put links to So So, so, so Live, um, and also I'm gonna put a link to her um, sleeve fitting guide because it's, it's really good and I can share more with you about that next week when I fine tune my final bodice. And if you're working along like Lean, if you wanna send me pictures of your actual bodice on how it's fitting, I can maybe you know, give you some suggestions next Friday to um, fit that because I'm sharing the things I'm doing to my muslin, but I'm guessing some of you probably have different fitting issues based on how your muslin is coming out. So, you know, I really, you know, I'd like to help you with those as well. So if anybody's sewing along with me and you want some advice on fixing your muslin, just send me pictures and I will um, take a look at it. And then next Friday, I will review any, you know, anybody else's besides me. But I'm really hoping to have like the perfect muslin on my body next Friday. Um, I, I'm teaching today, and then tomorrow, if anybody um, wants to hang out with me at 
7 o'clock standard time, um, you can buy a $5 market ticket for Stitches Expo September, and then that allows you to come to all the market sessions. So if you're a knitter, crochet, fiber artist, there's going to be um, lots of vendors who sell that kind of stuff and are sharing their what they have. And I'm going to be um, my market session, so like my virtual booth um, is going to be from 7 to 8 Central or 8 to 9 Eastern Standard Time where I'll be sharing all the things that I offer in my, my online store and I will have a coupon code exclusive for people who come to the market session. So if you're eyeballing one of my patterns and you want to save some money on it, well you probably have to buy a couple though because you do have to buy the market um, ticket, but if you if you want to join me for that, that will be kind of fun. That's going to be Saturday night. I'm also teaching my knit knapsack and my raglan sleeve. If anybody has been thinking about making the raglan sleeve and they want some quality time with me, um, that class is probably, it's not a, a huge class. So if you want to join me for that class, there's still time to sign up for it and download your pattern because I have a PDF version of the pattern. Um, you can hang out with me and sew raglan sleeve today at 3 and then tomorrow at 3 as well. The knit knapsack class is from 10 to 1. So I'm going to be pretty busy tomorrow. I'm kind of excited. I love it when I have a full day of teaching. Um, I'm also working with a lovely lady from Australia to fit pants. And um, what I decided to do with my private pants fitting now if you've been following along with me, you know that I'm dabbling in the top-down, center-out pants fitting method. And I will tell you that starting your fitting using the pattern prep exactly as it's illustrated in Threads Magazine um, saves a ton of time for fitting. And um, I'm very, very excited the way that is working out. And on Tuesday this week, I'm going to have an example of working with a low full butt and how you can use the top down center out method to work on fitting that specific shape without changing the edges of the pattern because that's really the premise with this top down center out method that you are fitting it while keeping the um, or maintaining the integrity and shape of the pattern and you're also looking at what the designer intended for the pattern to look like too so in this example um, I'm just going to show you I'm just going to show you some considerations if you're if you make a half twall one leg and you start fitting it if you feel like you need to take fabric off the center back edge for example I'm going to give you a different option that is top down center out friendly and it may actually help fit your pattern without you know digging into that center back edge so that's what I'm going to be doing on Tuesday and then on Friday remember we will be continuing the fitting of this bodice and like I said I hope to have the perfect bodice by next week I just ran out of time to really spend as much time as I needed to this week to work on it so I apologize for that but it seems to me that maybe another week for you guys is good too because if you have things you want me to look at please email them to me and my email is in the description below this video so I'm gonna sign off now because I have a bunch of things to do before my raglan sleeve class at 3 so um, thank you guys for joining me um, please keep me posted if you need help or if you want to send me pictures of your bodice and um, I will see you next Friday for another FabFit Friday Live. So have a lovely weekend, and thank you so much for joining me.